Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and of course, welcome back to Rockingham. Now, as you may notice, if you watched the past couple of videos that I've done on Rockingham, you'll notice that our truck is a little bit different. In this video, we have a 5th Gen Dodge Ram on a set of Raceline wheels, on boggers. I mean, this thing is built, it's set up, it's ready to go. Now, we have our same car hauler, and some of y'all may be wondering, where the heck is that Duramax? Where is that Sierra Duramax that you had before? And don't worry, after the past couple of recoveries, I figured it it was time to buy myself a new rig, so that's exactly what I did, but don't you worry, I kept the Duramax, and it's actually chilling out over there at the house right now, and I'm sure that we will need to use it for some other tasks here in the near future. Now, this isn't exactly a recovery, it's more like a opportunity, if you could call it that. Now, I actually got a call from a friend saying that there was a sort of a, basically a abandoned looking square body that was up near the village that had just been sitting there and apparently this truck has been sitting there for years and it's not necessarily for sale but it's also not necessarily not for sale either and I'm sure there's a couple of things wrong with it here and there but I figured why not go up and take a look at it and see if it would be a good candidate for a rebuild project so that's exactly what we're gonna do so let's fire the thing up <laughs> Dude, this truck absolutely roars to life. And now, we're gonna head on up to the village and take a look at this square body and see if it's A, a good candidate for a rebuild project, and B, if it is, we're gonna see how much they want for it and we'll get it back to the garage and then get the rebuild project underway. And if it is something that we want to use, then who knows, it could actually be another work rig for the fleet. This truck actually, by the way, I bought it used. I didn't buy it brand new. I bought it used. It didn't have all that many miles on it. It just had a bunch of upgrades already done to it when I bought it. I mean, including that gigantic off-road bumper in the front. So, technically, I mean, the amount of work that was already done to this truck was definitely up there. And luckily, the village isn't all that far from the shop anyway. Just make sure nobody's coming. Make our way out onto the correct side of the road. Thank you very much. I know I've done that, like... I've done that wrong quite a few times lately, but it's okay. We're fixing it. All right, so here's the village right here on the right. What do, exactly do we have going on? Now, I think it's... Oh, there it is. Oh, dude. Look at that thing. I mean, from here, it looks like it could definitely be an amazing candidate for a rebuild project for sure. Let me get out of the road. I'm going to try to, like, not be blocking everyone's way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of situate the truck and trailer so that they're nearby, but not, you know, absolutely in the way of everything. There we go. People should have a little bit of room from there. All right, so now let's walk on over there and see what this square body actually looks like and see kind of what, you know, sort of state it's in. Now, it looks like it's starting to, it's starting to rust a little bit. The paint is starting to kind of, you know, fade with age. But I mean, this thing, are we surprised that the paint is fading with age? I mean, I'm not. It definitely looks like someone tried to do some work to it at some point because it's got quite the suspension underneath it. And if we look under the hood or through the grill, this definitely looks like it's the turbo diesel model. So let me look at the rear suspension also. Dude, whoever owned this before went to town on the suspension upgrades. It's got brake upgrades, suspension upgrades. It looks like at one point, it's got freaking Dana 60s in the back. That's, that's gnarly. Now, it looks like at some point... Whoever was doing the work to it just kind of stopped, basically. I mean, I don't know if they just lost interest in the project or what, but let's try to fire it up. I don't know if it'll fire. Let's see if it'll fire up. Oh, try number one, not quite. Try number two, not quite. We'll give it one more try. Yeah, it tried to fire, but it didn't quite actually want to fire up. Okay, so there's probably some engine issues going on. But, I mean, let's go and talk to the owner and see if they're willing to sell it and for how much they're willing to actually sell it for. Well, after a lot, and I mean a lot, of back-and-forth negotiating, we finally got them to agree to sell it 
And I gotta admit, it was for a pretty dang good price. Now, what we gotta do is we gotta get it back to the garage because it's already on the trailer. It's already strapped down. It's already good to go. And we're gonna do a full overhaul on this thing. We're gonna do a full suspension overhaul. We're gonna do wheels and tires. We're gonna do an engine overhaul, bigger turbo, all sorts of stuff. And we're gonna actually put this truck to work in the fleet. So let's fire up the good old Dodge. Roars to life as usual, although the transmission did not want to go into first gear. It wanted to be in reverse instead. I was like, you want to be in gear? And it was like, no, I really have no interest in being in gear right now. Typical Dodge transmission, it's fine. Although, on this generation of Dodge, not really that big of an issue. On like the, you know, 03, 04, 05, 06, yeah, that generation, yeah, that was an issue. All right. Now, getting this thing back to the garage is a really, ex it's actually really exciting because it'll be the first kind of older style truck that we have in our fleet. And I know that to some people, like these square body trucks might seem weird to call like vintage in this, uh, in this day and age. But like, when you think about it, in a lot of states in the US, a NA Miata, a first generation Miata, qualifies for an antique plate and that was like 1990 91 92 93 when you wrap your mind around the fact that a first generation miata now qualifies for an antique plate in many many states it it, it starts to make you feel really really old all righty and coming in let's just make sure to not go too shallow on this i'm gonna go wide and then cut in there we go God, I have been getting really, really good at making that turn. I used to be terrible at it. Now I'm way better at it than I used to be. All right, now I'm going to try to get this backed up to the door, and I'm going to try to do a better job of it than I did with the last one, because the last one, we were actually not able to back it up to the door. We had to pull in uh, forwards. That was the only way. All right, let's back you in. Okay, we could back it up. But this trailer is weird because once it kind of starts on a certain axis, it doesn't want to get off of that axis at all. All right, here we go. I'm not. I'm trying to not turn too early. Oh, I think we got it dialed, though. Yeah, oh, dude, we got it dialed this time. Kind of ran over that pile of metal a little bit, but that's not a big deal. All right, shut you down, and we'll go ahead and unpack that rig. Now it's time to get the square body into the garage, roll it on in, and boom. Now let's start the build. So let's see. What kind of... Yo, they already had a full, like, heavy tow and haul spec build on it. That's pretty wild. And the 10 speed? Yo, I'm getting, like, all sorts of amazing surprises. Now, we do need to overhaul the suspension, and I'm thinking... For what we're going to be doing with the truck, we're going to do a trail hauler stage one spec for 40 inch tires. Now we're going to run a, we're going to run a slightly stickier tire, um, probably a red line spec and spec for forties. We're probably going to be looking at a, well, actually, I think we should probably go for the 43s. Those look a lot better and they definitely look like they fit the size of the truck a lot more. So let's see. I'm thinking a 43 red line spec mud runner terrain that's definitely going to be in line with your sort of you know uh bfg mud terrain style tire and let's see diff lock is already on and good to go engine and exhaust various uh yeah we're good to go with the diesel spec already we've already got the emblems all sorted out now for the interior should we throw some harnesses in there i think we should maybe for whenever we take on some slightly gnarlier tasks and then interior roll cage, we'll throw that in there as well for the, you know, most insane recoveries. And aftermarket steering wheel, just because it's a little bit nicer than the stock steering wheel. Bumpers-wise, we definitely need something that's got some recovery equipment on it. Like, for example, this Trail Runner pre-runner setup with the, um, the tow hooks and the winch cable. So we'll do that. Uh, the camper is sick, but I don't know if we're going to put it in this particular build. Now, do we have any... Oh, we could do the truggy bed. But the truggy bed would basically ruin our ability to, to be able to haul pretty much anything. And the front clip, I'm happy with that. We're definitely going to be doing the tools and the generator. We'll do a curved light bar up top as well. And is there anything else? Ooh, Roof rack with overland gear, absolutely. Rock sliders, snorkel for going into the, uh, only the most, you know, gnarly of environments. And let's see, anything else? Uh, we'll do the shorty hitch out back. 
and I'm not going to do any of the goodies, but I will do a different set of wheels on this thing. Let's see. Oh, dude, the classic aluminum beadlocks look awesome. That definitely fits the style of this truck. And then now it's time for a paint and bodywork overhaul. Now, when I say paint and bodywork overhaul, we're going to keep the two-tone, but we're going to make it all like, you know, nice, brand new, polished out, clear coated. And I know some of you guys may, you know, may have been hoping that we would stick with the um, kind of like the faded weathered look and don't get me wrong I really like that look but I really wanted to bring this truck back to a like kind of back to its not necessarily former glory but like you know kind of a almost like a taste of what it would have looked like if it had just rolled off the production line at least in terms of the paintwork so let's go ahead and throw I like the blue the blue and white looks really really good Let's make sure we got beans on the dash for extra good luck during those recoveries. And boom, that is the finished product. And I could not be happier to welcome this rig to the fleet. So let's actually fire it up and we'll drive it on over to the house and we'll actually park it up next to the Duramax. Oh, it's going to be right at home, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely right at home. Back you in. Oh, don't hit the Duramax. Let's, let's really try to not hit the other trucks in our in our work fleet. And bam. Dude, I am so pumped to have these two in the fleet together now. Of course, with the Dodge as well. But it's time to put this thing to work. And I'm definitely pumped to do just that. But if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure to eliminate your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time.